as sunlight hits the surface of the ocean, some of it's reflected back, some of it penetrates. Okay, that should be easy enough to think of. Some of that light may be scattered and some of it may be absorbed. If you think about your own experience or even watching documentaries about the ocean, but if you've had some diving experience or even some experience going down in a submarine or on Catalina Island in their little submarine, or if you've even dove down into a lake or have had, if you've ever scuba dived, it should make some sense to you that as you go deeper in the water, there's less and less light. There's less and less light because that light is being absorbed and scattered. Okay, so that's reducing the intensity of light as you go deeper in the ocean. So at any point as light is traveling from the surface to depth, that water may be removed. As that water is removed or as it's scattered away from the depth, so if it's, if it's scattered in a way, uh, if it's scattered anywhere other than deeper, that's going to, again, cause the light intensity to decrease. That decrease in light intensity is called attenuation. And that word attenuate just means to reduce something. The attenuation of that light, so the way in which light diminishes as you go deeper in the water column, follows a very well-known mathematical formula, which some of you will have no problem remembering it's called Beer's Law or the Beer-Lambert Law. But Beer's Law is a mathematical formula that describes how light decreases as you go deeper in the water column. And as it turns out, it is a exponential decrease, meaning that it follows what's called an exponential curve, meaning that light decreases not in a regular linear fashion, but it in a curvilinear fashion. Very quickly at the surface, more slowly as you go deeper, as we will see in just a second. This is a curve of light intensity versus depth. And here you see that this curve isn't a straight line, so it's not a linear relationship it actually follows what's called an exponential relationship. Now, I don't care if you necessarily understand what exponents are or do. They are the square of x squared or the cube of meters cubed. Um, they are the little numbers that appear above variables sometimes. That's okay. As long as you understand that an exponential relationship is a curved one, one that in this case curves downwards, all right? so very quickly falling off and more slowly and curving downward as we go deeper. So this is what the intensity of light would look like in an average water column. And this was a, an unaverage one because this has light going all the way down to 500 meters, which is extremely deep for most light. For the most part, the upper 100 meters are the lighted portions of the world ocean. But just to illustrate here, this is a representation of Beer's law or the exponential decrease in light as we go deeper in the water column. So you can see that light intensity starts out here at 1500 microeinsteins per meter squared per second. This is just a unit that describes the intensity of light. And as we get all the way down to the bottom here, we get to near zero in terms of light intensity. Okay. How fast or how slow the water, the light diminishes is going to depend on how much stuff's in it. If you've got a lot of stuff in the water column, a lot of phytoplankton or a lot of silt and clay, well, of course, light's not going to penetrate very deeply. If you don't have very much suspended in the water, if you're in a place like the middle of the South Pacific Ocean, where I saw some of the most beautiful blue water I've ever seen in my life, really a cobalt blue water, um, with doesn't have much in it, then light's going to penetrate very deeply into the water column. The Mediterranean Sea is also well known, or used to be well known, for its very clear blue water. So it should make some sense to you that that curve of Beer's Law 
is going to depend upon the absorbers and scatterers that we saw in the first picture and their concentrations. So if we have greater numbers, greater concentrations of absorbers and scatterers, light's going to diminish very quickly. If we have fewer, then light's going to penetrate very deeply. And the depth to which light penetrates in the water column is called the photic zone. If we look at Beer's law as a mathematical law, here's what we get. The light intensity at one particular depth, so I sub Z, light intensity at depth Z, is equal to how much light there is at the surface, this means surface depth, times this factor, and this is called an exponent. And again, I don't expect you to be able to mathematically manipulate this, but I do expect you to understand this equation and what changing certain of these variables will do. This factor, the attenuation coefficient, this KD, is a factor that expresses how much stuff we have in the water. So if we have a higher amount of KD, then we're going to have, as I said before, a very fast attenuation of light. If this number is low, if we have not a lot of attenuation, then we're going to have a deeper penetration of light. And it looks something like this. This is a more, much more reasonable one than the first one I showed you. Here we have a lot of attenuation. And as a result, light falls off very quickly. In fact, by 40 meters, we have hardly any light at all. And remember, the lighted portion of the ocean is called the photic zone. So it's the part of the ocean that's lit, the photic zone is. So in this case, we have a very shallow photic zone because we have a very high attenuation coefficient so we have a lot of absorption and scattering going on. On the other hand, when we have a low KD, and let's go back, KD is this exponent of this exponential function that describes the attenuation. When we have a very small number, then we get light that penetrates very deeply. We have a very deep photic zone. In this case, we're getting light all the way down to 100 meters, or if you prefer about 90 meters. So look at where this each of these lines crosses zero and that tells you what the depth of the photic zone is. So in understanding Beer's Law really all I want you to understand is that the intensity of light at a particular depth depends upon the absorbers and scatterers and it's the concentration of the absorbers and scatterers that determine whether you have a high KD or a low KD and as a result, you may have a shallow photic zone or a deep photic zone. And think about it this way, why this might be important. If you have a lot of runoff from land and it's preventing light from reaching the, the sea bottom, and in such a case you have a shallow photic zone, any plants or any seaweeds that are growing at these depths are no longer going to be able to grow. So from a practical standpoint, an environmental standpoint, understanding something about attenuation helps us understand something about photosynthesis, helps us understand something about productivity, helps us understand something about human impacts on the world ocean with regards to light. So our activities can actually reduce light in the water column and have a negative impact. So there's lots of great reasons for understanding this.